Today I'll talk about light in landscape photography. And because we are dealing with natural light as landscape photographers, I think it's best to discuss only these types of light. I'll use my photos to illustrate uh, each type of light. And I'll also try to offer you tips and suggestions about how to photograph in each type of light. So I'll be covering uh, blue light, golden light, northern light, flat light, stormy light, uh, light through fog, hard light, and natural light inside cities. So I think there are eight types of light. I'm pretty sure I can find even more, but I think eight, it's more than enough. My name is Toma, Photo Tom here on YouTube. I'm a full-time landscape and travel photographer. So if you're interested in this kind of topics, make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel for more similar videos. I also do workshops and uh, I offer tutorials on editing and post-processing. So if you're interested in joining me in one of my workshops in Norway, maybe Tuscany, maybe the Dolomites, maybe you want to photograph the forest in fall or you want to buy one of my editing courses, all the links are in the description of this video. And now let's get back to the main theme of today and that is talking about light in landscape photography. Blue light is the first light that I want to talk about and blue light happens in two moments of the day and that is before sunrise and after sunset. And it, it, it's it's been characterized by a general feel of blue, if you want. So after the golden hour, it's gonna, um, it's gonna be finished in the sunset and before golden hour uh, in uh, sunrise, you'll have these two moments when you have, uh, you, you have light visible on the landscape, but it's, it doesn't have other color than a bluish tint. This is the simplest way I can uh, kind of uh, explain it. And also the luminosity of the, um, of the landscape is almost equal with the luminosity of the sky. And you have, especially in winter conditions, you have that uh, surreal blue feeling. It's almost like, um, like mystery and it's, it's, it almost, it's almost like um, uh, a landscape not from this planet. Now, when you added this type of landscapes, make sure you don't lose completely the blue uh, feeling of that, um, of that landscape. Uh, sometimes we try to correct it by using a white balance of shade or maybe cloudy, or we can desaturate the blue channel in uh, post-processing, but sometimes it's good to have that blue feeling. I mean, that's the true reason for photographing during blue hour. Now, a very short tip, and I think it's very useful, is when you are on location and you want to photograph the blue hour and then the sunrise or sunset plus blue hour, try to have different compositions. And um, the reason is this, if you have the same composition, the one with the sunrise or sunset light, it's gonna beat in terms of um, wowness the blue the blue light it's the bl blue light it's not that spectacular as sunrise or sunset and i think that is why you need to have a completely different composition now let's move on to the, the second type uh, of light and that is the best light possible that is golden light now golden light happens uh, for sunrise um, some minutes before sunrise and a few minutes after sunrise depends on on the season how many minutes but it, it actually happens um, starts before sunrise and for the sunset uh, it starts again before sunset and you get you roughly you you're not getting necessarily one hour of perfect light but if you are on location one hour before sunset or one hour before sunrise you kind of feel when it's happening because the sun the the, the sky is starting to to get um, a really warm color. And that is, that is why it's called golden hour because you have that golden feeling. Well, depending on, um, on uh, the moment of the day, sunrise or sunset, you can get a more yellowish in the sunrise color or more towards purple in the, in the sunset. And you have pink reflections from snow in the morning and most, more uh, magentas uh, in terms of reflection from the snow in, uh, in sunset. 
it's it's one of the best moments to be out there in the landscape to photograph it um, and one of the tips is to if you want to further emphasize that feeling of gold is of course to use the white balance of cloudy now if you go to shade it can be a little overwhelming it's, it's gonna be I don't know liquid gold if you want so you you may want to stay away from shade as a white balance but cloudy can generate a really vibrant feeling uh, for the scene now the third type of light it, uh, I want to talk about northern lights now I don't have I have to be true with you I don't have a lot of experience with the northern lights I managed to capture the um, the, the aurora borealis last year when I was in Norway now I'm preparing for my wash up in the March and I think I, I, I'm I'm hoping to to photograph uh, Aurora Borealis again or Northern Lights. Now, a very good tip is this: during the day, find uh, or have in mind one, two, or three locations where you will have you will go quickly when Northern Light happens, uh, because uh, I saw in Norway a lot of photographers photographing the northern lights right there whenever wherever they saw the northern lights on the road on the side of the road there was no real and true composition to this so i think it's better if you think about a, a few few places and depending on uh, where you are located when you see the northern lights you just you just go there this is the first tip now the second tip is this uh, from what i've seen the northern light starts um, slowly and then it has a moment of burst and then it it fades away now you have a little bit of time uh, we had about 30 minutes until the northern lights starting to slightly uh, be visible on the sky and uh, the maximum point now when this happens you have to uh, you have to be I don't know how to, to say it but experimental with uh, with the exposure settings because uh, the light can become so intense that you don't need so many seconds in exposure so you, you have to you have to move really quickly but be very careful it's not like doing nighttime exposure it's not even doing like doing uh, full moon light exposure the light can be so powerful i uh, i used a higher value of iso about 400 or 800 i remember at a certain moment just to have a shorter um, exposure time and to be able to take a lot of shots because I, you don't know exactly how how long it's gonna last uh, light type number four uh, for a landscape photography is flat light this is not a, a light that it's that interesting but if if you are in a landscape um, and you are not there for the sunrise or sunset the best light that you can have there is flat light it's it's not going to be interesting you're not going to have uh, spectacular atmospheric moments but you're not going to have the hard shadows so now you can photograph the entire landscape this is a very important thing because uh, if you want hard light if you will have hard light in a location we'll talk about um, how do you deal with that but if you have flat light you can photograph anything anything it's it, it's okay to photograph it's not going to be a true spectacle but it's going to look okay uh, light type number five for landscape photography stormy light this is so dramatic and uh, as the name implies this happens uh, before or after a storm now the main condition is this not to have the entire sky covered by the storm clouds the storm is either behind you or in front of you or far away from you but the important thing is that a portion of the sky is covered by uh, the, the, the stormy clouds and then you have another area from where the light of the Sun hits the landscape now, why is this uh, very important because the reflection of light caused by those dark moody purple dramatic clouds of the storm creates such an impact and you you have such a, a deep and beautiful contrast I, I, I can I could say this almost rivals the sunrise uh, and sunset light it doesn't have the same warmth and the same color but it looks so good and you can get some really dramatic uh, moments now um, light number six light through fog 
I think light through fog is a completely separate category in landscape photography. I think light through fog is, uh, is uh, how can I say it? It's absolutely gorgeous. I had a few moments when I captured uh, the light through fog inside the forest. It was foggy, then came the sun and it managed to break the, the fog and now I'm getting all those um, uh, rays inside the forest, but I also managed to capture it uh, in um, sunrise moments when I had fog and then the sun came and it managed to pierce the fog and you have such a, a mystic moment. It's almost like you're witnessing a fairy tale. It's, it's almost like it's not real when you see that the, the, the fact that the entire landscape around you is filled with light because fog makes it makes the makes the light visible and it's it's like almost like it's flowing around you it's a really really powerful uh, moment and uh, it, it's very important to, to to be there to 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 capture it and to capture it well don't be afraid of lens flare you're not going to have lens flare when you're photographing into the light but remember you have to position yourself then the fog and then the light to see the rays of light and to have that feeling of of light filling the the atmosphere now let's move on to hard light hard light it's not that it's it's, it's the less interesting light but if you are in the perfect place and you know how to photograph, it can be interesting. Take a look at these photos of mine I took in the Dolomites. All these photos are done in, in the middle of the day in hard light. Now, the trick is to concentrate on, on details, but uh, as you can see, these are really huge mountains in my photos. I can't say uh, details because are really big chunks of stones, but in, in essence, Yes, I'm concentrating on details. I'm trying to isolate shapes. I'm trying to look uh, and to get the light off the context. And I want only an area of light and the rest is out of light. Now, yes, I had the, um, uh, the participation and caliber and uh, collab of the clouds in, that, in those moments. But let's face it, if you know what you're doing, even hard light can look really good and you can move to cities. You, when, when this happens, you can try and photograph and in black and white. The important is to realize where the light is gonna be visible and the pattern the light is creating in the landscape. And now we move to uh, the last type of light for landscape photography, and that is natural light inside cities. Uh, I noticed that um, especially in old towns, uh, because this is, that, that's where I photograph the most. And whenever you have really big towns with really high uh, or, or really tall uh, buildings, it, I think it's the same. Uh, that bouncing of the light diffuses the light. So it's, it's, it, can, um, it can create some really interesting uh, light moments. Now my advice and my tip for you is to try and find dark places and photograph towards light and in this way you'll have a, kind of like a frame inside the, inside the photo and you'll photograph uh, and you'll have that, um, that uh, moment when you have darkness and then you have light and uh, the eye will, will run away from the darkness and it will reach the, the, the light or you can have a much more even light. Again, you are inside towns and the light bounces uh, away. And if, if the streets are narrow or the buildings are really tall, you're, you're not going to get those hard shadows inside uh, the town or on your level. Now, I hope this was very useful for you. If you have anything to add or any type of light to add, use the comment section below. Don't forget, you can come to one of my workshops. You can buy one of my editing courses. Uh, thanks for being a subscriber and if you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing and until next time, bye bye.